I have some water pressure problems, I'll call it. However, it's just low pressure down in my house. My well is outside of my shop. That's where we're standing is in my shop. Water comes from the wellhead into the shop through this manifold here on the ground and then back out and down through a trench and into the house. There were a lot of valves, not well, through a lot of fittings and restriction and everything else. So we're gonna reconfigure the plumbing situation. While we're doing that, we're actually gonna move this pressure tank close to the wall so I can actually build some cabinets here in my shop. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. This install is going to be much different than what you would traditionally see for a water well install. Uh, we are gonna come out of the wellhead with a single line all the way over here to the pressure tank, which is about 16 feet. And then at the wellhead itself, there'll be a T, which you'll see, and that runs down to the house. In principle and in theory, it works fine. People will bring up, well, what about the dead leg? And the reality is there'll be a pipe here that runs into the wall in my shop that will feed a sink, which will eventually be here and also feeds an outside spigot. So there is no real dead leg here. That water gets used all of the time. And there'll eventually be an outside spigot for sprinkler systems outside the wall here. So there's really no dead leg issue here. It's just a little bit different in that there's a single line, not a return loop around the pressure tank. That'll make more sense as we move forward. But that being said though, we need to basically turn off this water and start ripping this manifold apart get the stuff outside ripped apart and replumb down to the house. This is my well. This goes down 220 feet. There's a pump down there and it pumps water up. Comes out the side of a bottomless fit adapter here. There's a 90, there's a 45 behind my leg. There's a 45 back there and goes into the bottom of the garage. <laughs> okay, so we cut that. We can unthread this adapter. We're going to go cut the rest of these lines over here and get them all out of the way. can be removed. Alright, so the old install here in the shop had a couple of unions I installed, which are extremely convenient for if you had to replace the tank. In this case, the new install won't have those, but we'll deal with it. However, it's convenient because couple of cuts and all this comes out. We're just going to cut right here. Why make my life harder than it has to be? This should come all the way up outside and it does. And now this one should also come all the way up outside. Now that we've removed all that and the tank is empty, I gotta be careful because it's still electrically connected, but we're gonna slide the whole unit that direction um, and reposition the bricks and wipe up the floor and then we're gonna replumb everything. Throw our last brick underneath the here. We have our new adapter and this is a Stainless steel T to PEX A adapters on both sides to a check valve to a, to a stainless steel nipple. This nipple is going to go directly into the bottomless pit adapter through a check valve into the T. This is what we're going to install at the wellhead right now. Put stainless steel thread tape on here and I've also installed non So it doesn't matter which direction the T points as long as one goes that way and one goes this way. So our one inch line will come off of here and go to the 
to the shop, which will be the pressure tank. The other one inch line will go down and feed the house. We have our one inch line here, and our three quarter inch line here. In order to install these, we use hose clamps, a PEXA to barb a fitting, and a torch to warm up the tubing. Before you warm up the tubing, you should always install your hose clamps. It's good practice, and that way you don't forget and have to remove everything. It's very easy to overheat this stuff, so go slow, take your time. Okay, there we go. So we have our adapter here, our adapter here, and our T off our wellhead. We need to grab our PEX lines and start putting this all together. So we ran our line into the shop. We're gonna put our PEX expander rings on here, one inch. Grab our PEX expander tool. Hopefully, quickly, put that on there all the way, and it's on all the way, and we hold it. Get our foot out of the mud. So there's our new main line to our shop, which in turn feeds the pressure tank and the controller. So our first step is to get this configuration put together down here. We need to come off of that adapter right about here and put a T in. Like that. That's how it should look. Put an expansion ring on there. We got our last ring for our one inch. Nice and cleaned off. I'm gonna put this on. Do the same down here. So that's all there is to the portion outside. It's a much simpler install. Basically, we're ready to go inside and hook up the internals and then turn it back on. We've gone ahead and pre-built the assembly I need. This is our one-inch line coming in from the well, our new line. Go ahead and throw an expansion ring on there. Throw an expansion ring on this side. Because I have a little bit of play up and down here, I'm going to go ahead and make this other joint up first. too much so I pull it back out so I can re-expand it so what is the deal here pipe there we go and then oh, our valve which is PEX B, which uses crimp rings. 
will install here. We will put our crimp ring on. So we want to make sure it's positioned properly, and it is. Our valve goes in and goes in. Everything lines up, except that we put it in backwards because I want the handle to go the other direction. Slide our rings up in place. Make sure we're good and we crimp it down. There's one. It's important before you crimp these that the collar and the tubing be aligned properly. There's two. I went ahead and installed a plug in this side of the controller, so it just is going into here. Once again, there's no dead lake concern here because I am in my shop all the time. We'll have a sink in here and a water spigot outside, which is used constantly. So the, any water that would be circulating through the tank, because of how a pressure tank works, would be pushed in and out of this line constantly, so where there's no dead leg. This is all done outside at this point. All the piping is installed. Now we need to backfill. Well, this is gonna wrap up the pressure tank relocation slash piping reconfiguration. This was to achieve two things for me. One, I needed to move the tank closer to the wall to gain space because I wanted to put my sink right where it's at. And the other one was to increase flow and pressure at my house. I will tell you that by removing all those fittings, the 90s, the T's, relocating the check valves, reducing all that restriction and putting in tubing that has minimal uh, flow restriction, the gains were negligible. Fortunately, I was hoping for a significant gain I didn't have a good way to test that in without just doing it, so we did it. I'm glad I did it. I upgraded the piping underground from that white PVC to the PEX A tubing, which is a much better product. And it's in a much cleaner install here in the shop. Overall, I'm fairly pleased with the result, more so because of the space I gained in here. I may be investigating a booster pump or something else like that down the road for the house. Realize that in my specific case, I don't actually have flow problems in the house, but my desire is to put in a sprinkler system and I was hoping to up the flow rates to be able to supply more than one sprinkler head at a time when I install a permanent sprinkler system. Hope you enjoyed, hope you got a lot out of this one, and until next time, thanks for watching.